Hello and welcome to this new quick video um, about the flare node in Nook. Um, this node here that you can find in the draw menu, uh, flare, there you go, uh, it's a little bit um, a mystery, meaning that I never personally use it that often. Um, and when I need to recreate this sort of lens effect, like lens flares, I tend to use different gizmos and plugins or a real lens flare plate that, w that I combine with, um, with the source plate to create this effect. But there is an interesting way of using this node in conjunction with the ZD Focus or the Convolve node that may help you in uh, creating um, more more interest, more visual interest in your um, ZD Focus. But before before analyzing that, um, let's see what the flare node can do and how we can use it for its intended purpose. So here I have a a plate with um, with the real lens flare, so that we can use it as a reference when we are recreating our own, okay? And then I basically created uh, my own lens flare and you can see that they really behave as the real one. I mean, in terms of motion, um, they're moving exactly as, um, as our uh, real lens flare, right? So this is the real one, this is what we created, right? and the motion, it's really similar, okay? So when you are creating a flare node, by default, it gives you this circle there that, again, uh, by itself is not very meaningful. So we need to plug our flare into our plate or as I did it here, I separate the lens flare fr from the plate and then I'm gonna plus it later. So we can. We can work this way uh, at the beginning just to see what we are doing. So the first thing is our position. And the position is basically the position of your uh, light source, okay? So you can basically track this to the position of your light source or as I did here, um, I was lazy. I just, you know, manually animate the position of my um, flare so that it's roughly s sitting in the same spot okay so you can do something like that uh, and again yeah tracking is probably the best solution but we're getting this okay and again uh, at this point we don't see much uh, we have just this um, circle that right now it's not matching the format of my plate so we may change change it here, it's 4K Ultra HD, and there you go. So now we have just that circle that is moving with our um, light source. Okay, now we have an offset that basically it's repositioning our flare on this invisible line between its center and the edges of the frame. Okay, but in this case, we don't want to play too much with that. Uh, I want the center of my flare to, to stay um, where my light source is. And then we have all of, a bunch of control that basically allow us to define the look of our flare. Okay, so we can, for instance, uh, let, let me unplug it so it's easier to see. We can, for instance, control the radius of the external uh, circle and the internal one, okay? And of course, the fall off in between the two, okay? So if I move this, you see that I am basically getting this type of effect. I'm making a more uh, sharp transition. Then you have a size multiplier that is basically scaling it up or down. And you have a control of anamorphic look. So if you're working with an amorphic plate, you can control the aspect ratio of your flare. You can control the color of your ring if you want to introduce some specific coloration, okay, in your outer ring, as you can see, 
okay and you can control the inside as well so the inner color it's basically controlling the inside of this circle so I can add different coloration to the outside and the inside all right um, fall off outer fall off inner fall off okay ba basically you see that it's not scaling uh, the the circle as we were doing here it's just controlling the the, the fall off okay then you have the color spread and color shift so you can basically add some uh, chromatic aberration around the um, the circle and you have some color shift that you can add basically okay so something interesting in itself already now let's see how it looks when we are viewing it here and still not much um, and the reason is because we need to move into the multi uh, tab in order to see some repetition okay so if i go in multi flare and i increase this number now we can start see some repetition okay and if we want to spread them apart a little bit more well we have the random offset that is basically offsetting our our different elements um, apart from the center okay so that's why i uh, i really don't like to move this too much okay i can use this offset to compensate so that the center stays in the center of my uh, light source uh, but then i can play with this if i want to spread them more and then i can of course randomize their size okay and i can randomize their use can okay? i can rotate basically their use i can control their brightness okay it's in a random way so um, and then I can control the edge flattening. So I can make them more sharp or less sharp. Um, and I can come back to my flare and here I can control the corner. So if I want to have like a square, triangle, octagon or whatever, I can control it here. And I can also, this is basically controlling the main one. Okay. So if I reset this here, uh, edge flattening, let's reset to zero and I go back here. And now uh, let me unplug so that we can see the first one, the main one, that is this one here. Um, you see that if I start to increase this edge flattening, I'm basically um, pushing the virtual points that we have around this circle to generate a different shape and I can control the, the number of corner by changing this number okay so if I want to have an octagon I can push that to an octagon I can flatten my edges and I can even control the sharpness okay so I can control the sharpness of my edges there and then I can rotate and, and again this is basically controlling the main shape but if I go into my multi and I play with this you see that I introduce some variation in that okay I can basically uh, introduce some random um, flattening level of all different all these different elements right I can rotate them in a different way so this one is rotating more than the other and then I have an asymmetry parameter, so I can basically add a certain level of asymmetry. So you see that uh, the luminance value is not the same for the entire shape, but I can multiply this and have this sort of um, effect that is more or less visible. Okay, and I can control the fall off and the angle. So it's really giving us quite a lot of uh, interesting uh, parameters to play with and create some interesting shape. Okay, that's that's the cool part of this node. That, um, again, I, I, I started to discover it very recently, honestly, and um, again, it, it's, it, it gives you quite a lot of control in terms of how you can reshape this element there. And once you're happy, uh, you know, uh, you have your own flair that right now it's very... Um, 
bad looking so we may play with the U and maybe make it a little bit more orange then we can go here and we may blur it more you know in both sides and then we can maybe go down into the visibility and make it less visible and by playing with this okay now again okay, I'm, I'm doing it very quickly but we can start to build some element that are behaving in a very similar way of our real lens flare. Okay, keep an eye on the real lens flare behind, and you know the type of motion is basically the same. And we can tweak this till we get our desired look. And the interesting part is that we can combine multiple iteration of this uh, flare node. So I can have another one like like that here, and that's that's when it's important to split our flare from our plate. So we have our flare on a separate level, then we combine them together with the plus, and then we combine this with our plate, okay? That's basically what I did here. Um, so this second iteration can be completely different, can have a different offset, a different size, maybe we can, you know, um, make it very small, uh, make it anamorphic. Well, it doesn't make sense to make it anamorphic since it's not an anamorphic lens, but you know what I mean. Okay, you can play with the color and, uh, you know, and have it different. And, and by layering uh, multiple instances of this node, you can create fairly complex uh, lens artifacts um, that can mimic reality pretty well. Now, an alternative way of using this um, flare node is to use it to create a kernel. Uh, let me frame it there, all right. Okay, so I'm using it to create a kernel that we can then use to drive a convolve node in order to um, generate a bokeh effect on our um, defocus plate. So, how does this work? Well, it's a very similar way. Um, so let's uh, maybe start from scratch. I'm gonna delete this flare node here and I'm gonna create a new one, all right? And what I do, I basically reposition it in a random position, doesn't matter. And then I simply crop it, okay? So I turn off my crop node and I center it, okay? So that I have my circle, basically. I, I, leave some space in order that if I want to add some chromatic aberration of uh, or um, chroma shift, I have enough space to not crop out any data, okay? So I leave a little bit of space, I don't go like that. <clears throat> and then I set my crop to reformat, and this is basically my kernel, right? But now I can control all the different aspects of my kernel by playing with the property of my flare node, okay? So basically I can uh, make it like an octagon and flattening a little bit my, um, my hedges and then I can make them a little bit more pointing, something like that. I can um, reduce the visibility in the inner color, okay? And maybe I can make my uh, fall off in my my outer fall off a little bit more sharp Something like that. I can add some chroma spread and some chroma shift so I can start customizing my uh, bokeh shape or basically uh, the shape of my of my virtual aperture let's say um, in order to control a convolve node, okay? So I have a plate here like this one, and I basically apply the grade just for the sake of boosting up the, the bright spot, okay? Just, I'm very just interested in seeing how this kernel is behaving, so I want some uh, high contrast level to have a better visibility on, on, my, uh, on my bokeh shape. And then I basically plug my filter in my combo node and I said to use the input channels so that I can see um, that chromatic shift here, okay? So you see that uh, we, we had some 
chromatic aberration around uh, our kernel and by setting our convolve to use input channels we are using uh, all the different color channels to um, uh, to drive our convolve and so we can see that chromatic shift in our convolve there all right and this is completely uh, parametric meaning that we can get into our uh, flare and we can now start controlling our size for instance so we can make our shape smaller or bigger okay and we can control how many corner we want to add or to have okay we may control if we want our in color to be more filled okay or a little bit more transparent right so we have all sort of different control that we can play with and customize this shape to match a shape that we have in our real plate or uh, for creative purposes. So maybe we don't have to match it to a real bokeh shape, we just want to create our own for our, um, you know, to satisfy our taste. And we can play around with all this parameter uh, to get exactly what we want. Additionally, um, on this side, I basically added some noise to break up the, uh, the, the texture of my kernel. Okay, so what I did was simply uh, grabbing the same crop node and plugging, let's do it now, plugging a noise. Okay, so this is a simple noise that I can control the size and so on. I plug a, a slight blur and then I use this copy node to copy the alpha channel from the noise into a, a vector layer. So I'm copying it into the forward layer, forward U channel, forward V channel. And then after that, I use an ID distort that is reading the, the forward layer and is basically distorting this noise. So it's just, you know, to randomize even more our noise applying a certain level of distortion, right? So if I view it here, uh, this is without the distortion, this is with distortion. And you can control also, you know, you can add a blur to make the noise uh, more or less visible. And if you view it here, you can clearly see that there is something happening, okay? There is some texture that we are applying to, the, to our kernel. Uh, and we can control the intensity by, you know, increasing or reducing this multiply or the mix in this multiply node. And you have full control on the size of your noise, um, you know, uh, the distortion, if you want to have less distortion or more distortion, that's up to you. Again, it's not giving you an, a completely different look. It's just adding some, some interest uh, in your kernel. Okay, and that may, may be what you're looking for. And that's pretty much it. I hope that you learned something new and that this may help you in, in some ways. Um, other than that, feel free to reach out anytime and uh, have a good day. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.